What about that drop goal from Cheslin Colby oh. 50 metres out? Oh, he, he certainly uh, sent a message, I suppose, to the Lions as well, didn't he? Like, that's a... We we all know that he can he can run the ball and he can defend. He's a power defender, uh, but man, I I, di- I didn't expect that. Uh, and that distance mm. wasn't at altitude either. <laughs> yeah. It was uh, it was cleanly hit. It yeah, put him at hit. sixty meters at altitude and it, yeah. anything could happen. But I mean, it could come to something like that. Like uh, there was a pretty slick operation. I know we'll get to the Lions game later on, but they they looked a slick outfit too. So it's setting up for you know quite. You know, when guys like that are in current form going into that South African environment, it's, it's exciting. Why don't we just jump straight into the Lions then? Um, you know, we've seen a bit of a drama with injury to Alan Wynne Jones. What's the go to as far as leadership? Oh, look, they've gone to Connor Murray as yeah. the skip, but they'll have a leadership group. They've got Owen Farrell there, um, you know, Itoji, um, Hogs, a, a captain. There's, a, there's enough experience and leaders, and, and I, I actually like the way. Um, Conor Murray played on the weekend. He, he sort of wound back the clock. Sometimes a little bit too deep, Bryn, uh, on his box kicks. I can't. I shouldn't be really coaching that, uh, being a hooker. But yeah, they they weren't really contestables, uh, which would be the only the only um, point of, of concern. But he he really controlled things uh, well for Josh Adams' try. Uh, used the forwards well and then switched back. Used the blind well. Courtney Laws scored one in the second half, which was disallowed because he knocks on. But the exact same players you know he's really busy and and looking and looking and then switched back blind and Courtney Laws you know knocked it on but was over the line so a, a lot of his running game kicking game balance and and that sort of you know we talk about DuPont and and being a general a, a lot of their kicking game and a lot of their their um, structure came off him uh, so I think he's in a perfect position clearly in the in the role he plays in that team to be to be leading that side mm. what do you make of it Brent? Yeah, I think those points um, are all valid. And I think, look, um, you know, it's, it's devastating for Alan Wynne Jones, who, again, has put so much in order to the Lions rugby, obviously Welsh rugby. And you know, fingers crossed he can, you know, I think Warren was talking about it, that he might. I don't know if there's actually a call on it, but from what I heard a couple of days ago, is he might be ready for that first test at best. But yeah, you've almost got to prepare without him. And Tipperick, obviously, injured. But no, no, I think Conor Murray, um, they're going to, the way they played on the weekend, it's pretty clear that's going to be the plan that's going to be. Um, implemented probably. Um, they did it when they were here in 2017 with Connor Murray being master of festivals and, um, and look, yeah, they'll get those festivals right where they actually will be able to have um, their winners going up in the air. Um, but you know, the worst case scenario is that they're within position just to make the tackle and so they can't counter attack off that. And look, he'll get better at that and um, they'll implement that better moving forward. But um, yeah, 35 kicks to Japan's 21. Um, so obviously Japan wanted to play and we saw the high temper that they wanted to play but you know, I thought defensively bar um, I thought defensively in that first half that Lions team did, defended really really well um, Japan threw a lot of them uh, you know they probably they won the territory and the position battle with the amount of ball that they did have in, have in play so I think they got what they needed out of that and um, traditionally you know the Lions are, are, are great defensively and as they are in the Northern Hemisphere they have a lot of interest in how they defend and have a lot of uh, um, um, they talk about that and defend that a lot so um, yeah, it's, it was a good a good start for them, and then um, obviously Conor Murray, his leadership will be will be great. And he's got guys like Owen Farrell, who's um, captain England, and obviously a Toby as well, and Hogan, other players that have, have a, a bit of experience in them as well. I think you just touched on it um, there around their defence. Like in that first half, they really left the rucks alone. They didn't um, put too many hunters in, and they had you know fourteen. Sometimes the tacklers getting onto his feet, fifteen men on their feet. And they operated that rural rush D. I thought Henshaw was the player of the day for me. Like defensively, he was massive. He got up, he got an intercept one just before Vandermeer's try when he picked uh, down the blind side. But that was on the base of defensive pressure and getting a turnover from an intercept. He put on some great shots, but also, more importantly, he, he did almost like, uh, I don't know if you remember it, Malakai Fekitoa was really good at it. He'd shoot out at 13, show face to the first five. And almost put in in the first five's vision, and they almost go to pass it, and they're like, oh no! And then they tuck and go, so it pushes them back into where his big bodies were. So he was massive on that, and and really clean in attack. He used really good feet before Josh Adams try, and and I think then in the second half there were two or three going for the turnover, and that's when they got broken on the edge, and probably could have been scored yeah. against in the 76th minute if the crossfield kick had been a little bit more accurate. So a couple of times 
they maybe got a little bit too tight late because they, they had to absorb a lot of pressure. Japan had a lot of ball in that second 40 and they defended, you know, don't get me wrong, even when they were broken on the edge, the pleasing thing is, is they, they bought into the rush D but also once the ball had gone, they, they busted us to get back and make that tackle and, and when Himeno was held up, uh, I think around the 70th minute mark, you know, that was a huge mm. effort because they were done there and they busted back and, and you know, obviously held them up. So their, their yeah. defensive system is massive, but it does rely on guys making really good decisions around that breakdown. And I thought one guy that did, did extremely well was Courtney Laws. I was really impressed. I thought he put in a massive shift. And so we talk about Alan Wynne Jones, you know, potentially, you know, being out of the tour. Um, a guy like him stepping up like that on first game, you know, gives you comfort. I think, you know, when you've got a Toji and, and, and co to, to still come. So there, there was a lot to like. Um, and then on, on the attacking side, I really like their forwards into play, Bryn. I don't know if you saw it, but a lot of tips, a lot of inside balls, not just, you know, off the run carrying. And then their uh, Burns try, their whole running yeah. off 10. Uh, I mean, there was a, it was a pretty slick performance for a first, first up game. And, and Japan threw everything at them. Um, so it was it was great viewing. Only thing I was a little bit confused. I don't know if you guys were, but why Japan were going for the threes at, at twenty eight seven, and the sixty fourth minute and the sixty seventh minute. I was sort of thought they might want to go for the corner and, and play catch up, but it's just um, setting a base for the comeback. Yeah, yeah, setting setting a base. But um, other than that, I, honestly, I thought there was a lot to like and a lot to, um, I suppose, pull apart for the South African side. 